So this is a convex mirror. It's like this surface of the spoon. It bulges outwards in the middle. So if you look at the image formed in this convex mirror, you can see things in the image appear slightly smaller than they do in real life. So if you look at me, you look at my image, my image is slightly smaller. It's also a bit like looking at a plane mirror because when I look at this mirror, it looks to me like I am actually located somewhere behind that mirror. So that tells us that there's got, this is going to be a virtual image as the light isn't actually coming from behind the mirror. So let's look at some ray tracing now, which describes what the image from this convex mirror looks like. We'll see why objects appear slightly smaller in the convex mirror. Now the first thing we need to do for the convex mirror is work out where the focal point is located. So in order to work out where the focal point is, we draw parallel rays being reflected off the mirror. So we'll draw the first parallel ray going along the principal axis and it is reflected back along the principal axis. And now we'll draw a ray parallel to this one. Now for it to be reflected, we need to look at where the normal to the surface is and then the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So it's reflected back like so. And let's draw a parallel ray below the principal axis. So it is also reflected black such that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. And finally, let's draw another parallel ray up here. The normal to the surface is like this, and so this is reflected up here like this. And a final parallel ray will be reflected down here like this. And now these rays are not converging. Converging means coming together to a point. They're in fact diverging, moving apart. So if we can imagine an eye looking at these rays, once again the eye doesn't realize that these have all been reflected off the mirror and it actually sees these rays as going back behind the mirror. So let's trace them back behind the mirror. This one here just travels back along the principal axis. This one here travels back here. This one here travels back here. This one here travels back like this. And we have back like this. All the rays appear to have come from a single point, which is called the focal point as it was for the concave mirror, but now it is located behind the mirror. So this is F and it's the focal point. This length along here is called the focal length and we've got some radius of curvature which will be back here and is the radius of this circle. So let's now use the focal point and the radius of curvature to do some ray tracing for a convex mirror. Okay, so the same technique of ray tracing. We draw our object here in front of the mirror. Now for the first ray, we draw it parallel to the principal axis and it is reflected off the mirror somewhere up here. If we extend this ray back behind the mirror, it goes through the focal point. So for the second ray, we draw it slightly differently than with the concave mirror. We draw it as coming from the focal point to the top of the object. So we don't actually imagine it coming from here. We imagine it as originating at the object. So here is coming from the object to the mirror and it's being reflected. And when it's reflected, because it's 
been through the focal point like that is reflected parallel to the principal axis like this. Now you can see these two reflected rays are actually diverging or moving apart. And so once again, we have to imagine what the eye sees. And the eye traces these back behind the mirror, like this in a straight line parallel to this axis, and they cross at this point here. So this is where we see the image formed. It is a virtual image. As the rays don't really pass through this point, it's just what our brain interprets. And it is behind the mirror and the right way up, which is exactly how we saw the image in the demonstration. So one application where you'll come across convex mirrors such as this is in the side mirrors on cars. These mirrors have a warning on them. Often they'll say, warning, objects in this mirror are closer than they appear. And that's because, as we've seen from the ray tracing, the image formed by these mirrors is actually smaller than the object itself. And if they're smaller, our brain interprets this as further away. So this brings us to magnification. Mirrors can cause an object to be magnified. So a magnification is a change in the apparent size of the object. So magnification can be calculated using the formula magnification is equal to the image height over the object height. Now one trick is that if the image is inverted, that is if the image is upside down compared to the object, we actually have to put a negative sign in front of it. So the negative sign in the magnification indicates that the image has been flipped upside down. Now convex mirrors such as this one have a magnification between 0 and 1 showing that they're making images smaller. So with a convex mirror like this, this lets it see a, wild, wilder, a wider field of view, which is why they are used on the side, as side mirrors for the carts. So concave mirrors have a much wider range of magnifications, and it depends where the object is in relation to the focal point and the center of curvature of the lens as to what the magnification is going to be. Now this topic is all about glasses and while some light is reflected off the glasses, most of the light, the light which gets to our eyes that we're actually interested in, is transmitted through the glasses. So in the next video we're going to be looking at refraction which describes what happens to light when it moves from one medium to another medium.
Special thanks to Sebastian Frick for filming this. You may have caught a glimpse of him in some of the reflections of the mirror. And thanks to Joe Wolf for producing Fizz Clips, which we made a lot of use of in this video.